We've got deep fakes coming to comedy and the presidential election. And in this episode, we talk about what's happening in the world of streaming and why we should be expecting big things for AI in that department. It's the week of 29th of January. This is The Forecast. I'm James Poulter. Let's get into it. First up this week, the estate of George Carlin has filed a lawsuit against the company called Dudesy Podcast Outlet for an AI-generated comedy special that is mimicking him based upon his content. The special, which is titled George Carlin, I'm Glad I'm Dead, allegedly uses Carlin's style and material without permission. Now, the lawsuit is claiming that there are violations, of course, to his right for publicity and, of course, copyright. Dudesy and the podcast hosts Will Sasso and Chad Coltgen are being named as defendants in the case. And I think this really highlights the legal challenges that are going to be around us when it comes to use of celebrity likenesses in AI-generated content. Just before Christmas, I happened to bump into the comedian Jimmy Carr at an event I was attending and speaking at. And I was having a discussion with him about his worries around how AI might be coming to take his content. Not necessarily his likeness. He was very convinced that many of his jokes that have been ingested into engines like ChatGPT, now this hasn't been confirmed by anybody, but I think that the overarching concern is real but this example i think is really quite something for the ability for a ai model to have not only ingested carlin's work but also his likeness and then start reproducing an entire one hour long special i'm sure this is the first case of this but it's not going to be the last as many more artist content continues to be pulled into these different ais whether intentionally or accidentally by just data scraping that's going on Sticking with deepfakes, our second story this week is Eleven Labs. Now, you'll remember them from last week's episode. According to the company, they have just banned a user for creating a deepfake audio account of Joe Biden. The fake audio was used in a New Hampshire robocall. That's when you get these automatic telephone calls from what sounds like the president calling you. Usually, this is done with pre-recorded adverts. And it told the voters not to vote in the state's primary. Now, Pindrop, the security company, they've identified Eleven Labs as the source with over 99% certainty. Eleven Labs are unable to comment on the specifics and emphasize that they are dedicated to preventing misuse of audio in their AI tooling. But of course, it raises real concerns about potential voter suppression and manipulation in elections. We talked about this last week that we feel like this year is going to be the year of the AI election. And this is bound to be first of a number of cases we'll see come about as we go further beyond the primaries and into the actual main general election in the US. Eleven Labs' platform apparently was misused in this case soon after a beta release was uh, made available, and that is what's been creating these celebrity audio clips, which are obviously questionable. The company has warned against cloning voices for abusive purposes and is exploring more safeguards. And I think we're going to have to see, particularly in this audio space, where we don't have that kind of visual to check. The visuals of many of these deep fakes are not quite full fidelity yet, but the audio is so close. We're going to have something in the world of digital watermarking or the ability for us to tell when these content pieces are coming from AI models. So I'm going to be interested to watch over the coming months how Eleven Labs respond to this and whether or not they're going to end up banning more accounts as more people try and get started using this technology. In slightly different news, I thought I would comment a little bit on what's been going on in the streaming wars. Netflix have just had a big announcement this past week that they have acquired the rights for streaming of the WWE, that's the World Wrestling Entertainment Company, previously many of us will know the WWF, back in the day of Euro 90, Stone Cold Steve Austin or The Rock fan like I was. You'll know that this rights is a massive deal when it comes to the world of live sport and entertainment. The fact that Netflix have picked up is really a big signifier about their potential move into not just the streaming space, but the live sport space, something that they haven't really dabbled in very much in recent years. Now, why am I talking about this and what's the AI point to it? This deal is worth $5 billion with the WWE for broadcasting WWE Raw specifically. And it's definitely going to strengthen the market position of Netflix. And I think if we look at them overall with a streaming service that's now gained over 30 million subscribers just in the last quarter of 2023, they now have 260 million accounts around the world. And they've also just announced a bunch of pricing changes to drag a bunch of people down into the cheaper but advertising sponsored tier and also pushing people up into the ad free but more expensive tier. This is an absolute behemoth of a company. They're leading the streaming wars. They're ahead of Disney by about 150 million subscribers. Analysts are proclaiming that Netflix are going to be the absolute winner in the streaming wars over the next couple of years. Netflix included generative AI in particular as a potential competitive risk in its annual report to the SEC. The concern is that competitors are effectively using generative AI 
to create content and also to add to the user experience that could impact Netflix's ability to be competitive and particularly just across its content, also its operations. They also added warnings about increased exposure to intellectual property claims due to emerging technologies like AI, as we've just seen in other stories. Content is all over the place, and particularly in the world of deepfakes, this is going to cause some real issues. Now, Gen AI's role in content creation is still pretty limited at the moment, and there are obviously the potential copyright issues that we've got to think about. But I think Netflix is really interested in how the future of AI could affect their business, not just them directly by them implementing it, but by the other streamers coming into the space. The use of AI in Hollywood, it's been a contentious issue. It was the thing that created the SAG-AFRA strikes earlier this year. And especially as those unions continue to be pretty concerned about what's going on, AI isn't just going to impact the user experience, but also jobs. But I think the thing that many people are missing in the streaming wars is that AI hasn't really improved the experience of using one of these streaming services. If you think that you're heading into your Netflix browser or Disney Plus, HBO Max or any other service, your ability to get recommendations is still pretty much limited on the stuff that you've watched and how much of it you've watched, plus things like likes and other star rating systems. And this seems like a real miss. The amount of data that currently sits behind the average TV or movie on any one of these streaming services is massive. Not only is it, of course, the plot line, the information about the film itself, who shot it and where it was directed by, but all of the different actors that are inside of it as well. Most obviously, when you log into things like Prime Video from Amazon, you have the IMDb integration, which I'm sure many of you have used to answer the question of, I thought I recognized that guy, what was he from? And that's a common experience for all of us. But the thing that I feel like all of the streaming services are missing out on at the moment is bringing that experience into a more generative, particularly voice-driven experience. Now, depending on the device you're using, you may not be ready to start barking commands into your remote control in the middle of the living room. But for most of us, we're quite used to watching streaming services across a range of devices where we'll often have headphones in listening to them, particularly if it's on an iPad or a mobile phone if we're on the train or commuting or something like that. And this feels like a real obvious opportunity for the streaming services to start bringing generative AI into the actual watching experience rather than worrying so much about what it might do to the content creation end of things. I would love to see some streaming services begin to integrate generative search to find programs I didn't get usually recommended or can't always remember the name to Spotify in the music space with their generative AI DJ and being able to create curated playlists. But none of this functionality seems to exist in the world of TV and movie streaming. And I think it is a real loss. So I'd love your thoughts on this. Do you think that you would use them some of these generative AI streaming services if they integrated it into search functionality or playlists? What kind of content are you looking to see in the future? Do you really want to see AI generated movies and TV shows? We've seen people having a go at it. The content quality at the moment is patchy. So I'm not entirely convinced that this is going to take over watching reruns of Friends and The Office anytime soon. I'd love your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, if you've got stories that you think I should be covering here on the forecast, I'd love to hear from you. Drop them below wherever you're watching, either on LinkedIn or if you're over on YouTube. And particularly if you're on YouTube, would you do me a favor? My goal this year is to get past 1,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. I'm hovering around the 500 mark. That's a small win in and of itself. But if you would like to subscribe and get more content like this, then I would love it if you did that right there and then. And if you are watching on LinkedIn, head over to YouTube. You'll find the link in the comments. Do me a favor over there if you're enjoying this. That's all I ask. Okay, that's it from this week's episode of The Forecast here on the 29th of January. I hope you're having a very good start to the year. Bring on February and springtime season is upon us and I will see you on the next one.